Welcome back to the Human First CEO series on LinkedIn Live. I'm Nick Maida, CEO of Gainsight, and, and I love the opportunity to meet leaders that I admire on this series and get you give you a chance to meet them as well, to hear about how companies can run in a way that we, we think of as human first, where you can think about all your stakeholders, your customers, your employees, their families, the community around you, as well as your investors. And there really is no company that embodies human first and this concept, and honestly, it's pioneered it more than Salesforce.com. Salesforce, if you've uh, read the book Trailblazer, or if you've seen all the amazing things Mark Benioff has talked about on countless interviews, they've advocated for the idea that, you know, if you focus on business doing good, that's also good for business. And I think that's a good way to summarize what we believe in with human first. So I'm thrilled to have my friend Bill Patterson here EVP of the CRM business at Salesforce uh, to talk about human first leadership. Welcome, Bill. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I have to say, before we get started in, in today, congratulations on an amazing milestone. Uh, you know, for you personally, for your business, for your customers. Uh, you know, I've I've been sharing you guys for a long time, and um, it just really is a great testament to the leadership that you've brought. So I'm excited to talk about you know human centricity because. Uh, much like those kind words you gave for me, I, I feel the same about you, obviously. Well, thank you so much, Bill. I really, really appreciate that. It's a, it's an exciting time, you know, I think for all of us and also such a challenging time for the world. So it's an important time to really think about that human perspective. And it's good to start with the human perspective that you're in. Uh, we actually had a quick chat beforehand uh, that Bill has had an, a bit of an adventure uh, in, in the last few weeks around COVID. So tell Tell the team where uh, where you were before and where you are geographically now and how you got there. Well, my family and I live uh, just outside of San Francisco, uh, and we decided that to see family in a safe manner, we were going to drive across country to Naples, Florida. So we drove about 3,300 miles uh, over the last five days. Um, I think I had a turkey sandwich at Subway for my Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing more human, I guess, than, than that. Uh, and you can learn a lot about your family and yourself uh, somewhere around mid part of Texas where there's nothing around you. But uh, it was a, an incredible adventure and just uh, very fortunate we've had the time to uh, to spend with one another uh, in this moment in time. That's amazing. Yeah, turkey sandwich, uh, just like the Pilgrims did back in the day, right? So uh, it's a that's an amazing story. Very, very human. And I'm so excited for you to be able to be in Florida and hopefully get enjoy uh, some of the time there uh, as we kind of work through the last, hopefully the last few months of COVID. So it's great, you know, we, in this discussion, we talk about, you know, this idea that we want to drive success for all stakeholders. And you know, I like to start with the community around us because I think that's been a big area. And then we'll talk about our team. We'll talk about our customers, which Bill and I are both passionate about given what we do. And then we'll close out with how that all benefits, you know, shareholders as well. So, you know, community, I'm super excited to talk to you about this because there, again, there's no company that embraces the idea that a company has to be successful if the community is successful around it than Salesforce. And yeah, I think Salesforce has been doing things around community success from the very beginning. I'm curious, just like you as a leader at Salesforce, sort of how that showed up this year and then how each leader kind of makes that their own inside Salesforce uh, uh, in 2020. Yeah, well, I think first off, what I love about Salesforce um, is, you know, our trailblazer ecosystem, our community of uh, practitioners, of end users, of administrators, of developers, of our ISV partners who build on our platform. And, you know, during, you know, COVID specifically, you know, we operated with the responsibility at Salesforce that it's our role to make sure that, you know, not only is our community of, you know, kind of ecosystem safe, but also the businesses that run on our platform, are they safe? Are they running, you know, kind of safely uh, to respond to the needs of their customers? Uh, you know, can they, um, you know, see and respond, you know, now with this big movement to home, how can they use our technology to kind of help with business continuity to kind of keep running? And, you know, I would just say that, you know, for the most part, what we did at Salesforce was, you know, kind of lean in with our uh, Trailblazer community around creating new innovation for the pandemic. Um, initially, we created a solution called Salesforce Care, uh, which was offering our technology at scale uh, available to customers, you know, for no charge for 90 days during the pandemic so that organizations could create a response to a you know, set of services and applications to meet the needs of whatever their community was. Um, following that, we created a new product called work.com. So we're not in the pandemic, just at home kind of stopping. We're reinventing and creating with our trailblazers, and, you know, working alongside us, new innovation, new solutions that kind of meet the needs of the moment of the time. Uh, and it's just been great to see the rallying cry of how everyone has 
kind of signed on to this movement and created these solutions that you know, have been powering businesses to reopen safely, uh, powering now the next wave of this vaccination wave that we're about uh, ready to um, embark upon. Uh, and I think that's our role is really to rally to action. Um, and that's what um, you know I think has been motivating is just seeing the Trailblazer community rally to action. Um, and that's, um, I think it's been fun uh, to be honest, uh, to, to really see that invention spirit in this community at large. I think mean, it's incredible. And I, I can imagine, you know, I mean, first of all, the fact that you took the technology you already had and then said, how do we reimagine that to help in this moment? I think that's awesome. And I think it's so many companies have done that. Um, but Salesforce really led around that. I can imagine also there's probably, you know, sort of two mixed things for employees. So on one hand, I'm guessing there's so much purpose and meaning from doing this and be able to talk to your family about it. On the other hand, I can imagine it's been an incredible amount of work. Because you also also had day jobs, I believe. I, I think you also run an unbelievably successful business that has revenue and customers and all that stuff. How, how did you kind of motivate the team to rally for these community efforts? And, and um, you know, what was it like for the employees? Yeah, I think, um, first off, we've always said, and you mentioned you know, the book Trailblazer that Mark you know, authored earlier this year, that our values create value. And our values here at this time were about leaning in with purpose and helping organizations you know, use our platform for good, use our platform for change, and use our platform to create valued opportunities uh, around the communities that we serve. Um, and so that higher purpose mission became that rallying cry. Um, we believe that, you know, at Salesforce, that by creating these new innovations, like good things will happen, good things will follow, you know, kind of the innovations that we create. And that's exactly what we saw. Um, we had incredible results, you know, in our second quarter, uh, because, you know, we kind of inspire new invention and yeah. a lot of our customers into action. Uh, and, you know, I think that you'll can see continuation of, of just, you know, that, that excellence because our, our employees are all that mission driven uh, to really use this moment in time for that reinvention and to you know, do good. And did you find the employees kind of found that extra gear, just a motivation because of because of this opportunity to help? Did they just kind of find that extra time and energy and all that? I think we've all learned a lot about ourselves uh, in this moment in time, and it's amazing. Today, we're in all digital. Um, you know, I think we, before we were kind of digitally integrated, right. one hundred percent digital. Uh, and so, this experience of being able to create community amongst ourselves, to create connection, to create purpose, to create meaning—those have been the, probably the biggest lessons of you know of my career during this pandemic that we can do incredible things because the technology that we have allows us to get, the technology kind of fades into the background and allows us just to be together. Um, and that's been fascinating. I think that has, you know, to your point, you know, created that extra gear, that extra motivation, but also the purpose, you know, of the Salesforce employees because of, you know, our connection and our relationship with our customers, we also couldn't let our customers down. Uh, and we were really sitting there leaning in with them about, you know, at this time, like, how do we help? Um, so I just think that higher order purpose is what, you know, kind of motivated all of us, uh, you know, and, and kept that resilience incredibly high and, and the actions incredibly sound. That's incredible. So let's let's switch maybe to that second chapter of the team. Right. So, you know, Salesforce is an incredible team. I have so many friends who work there that work on your team that have worked there in the past. And, you know, there's so much pride around the values and the purpose of the company. It's, and it's very inspirational. Um, I can imagine this year because the company probably came from more of a, a, a culture where people could see each other and all that stuff, uh, you know, in, in San Francisco and all your great locations, it was a lot of adjustment. And I'm guessing that you probably learned so much that you're going to carry forward. So when you look at it now and you look at next year, are there lessons you're going to continue carrying forward that maybe would go beyond the pandemic as a leader? Yeah. You know, I think um, you're right. You know, like our culture is the spirit of connection. You know, we obviously have amazing events like Dreamforce every year, yeah. Uh, in years past, anyway, that we're bringing hundreds of thousand people into San Francisco to celebrate the success of our trailblazers. Well, this year it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. Where obviously we can't do that. And so we are creating more of these intimate connections and these intimate moments of a more personalized dream force for every customer that we're engaging with. And we call that dream force to you. Uh, so that allows us really to take this concept of dream force, which is a big celebration moment, and really make it personal. Um, and I think that's where. That's an example of the kinds of things that you know we're doing to reinvent and create these moments of durability that allow us to tailor our products, our services, our events, our marketing into a much more personalized and acute manner that I think this moment of time, while it is a little bit constraining that we can't be together, 
Allah is just going to do something really special, which is be more uh, direct and, and more dedicated, you know, kind of to the needs of a customer, not every customer. Um, and those are kind of, I think, the kinds of things that, you know, just are the spirits of reinvention. And, and you know, I, I've always believed that a degree of constraint creates incredible innovation opportunity. And that's so true. You see it right now. That's so true. And how about, you know, when you think about your team week to week, are there things that you're like doing now that you're like, gosh, we should keep doing these things even once we're all back together? Yeah, you know, uh, I think early on in the pandemic, it became, you know, work just became sitting in front of a screen. Uh, and, and so, you know, while you may not have actually had a work product to work on, the fact that you're on a Zoom meeting, that was like work. Yeah, right. <laughs> but now, uh, I think, you know, that we've learned to alter our need to be together with creating more durable asynchronous modes of communication, uh, which allow us to then, you know, create work products that, you know, we don't have to be together to create. And so... I think those are also the kinds of things that just adapt the everyday kind of work where we become more written form, um, mm -hmm. more asynchronous, allowing others to collaborate easier across time zones and across our global kind of uh, employee base. Um, those are the things I expect, you know, will, will become gifts that this time has given that allow us to rethink the way in which work gets created or delivered. And then I think when we actually are able to be together again, boy, are we going to appreciate that. Um, oh, my God. The time we're going to you know, not take for granted the, the, the kind of happy hour that you might do to celebrate your team. Because uh, today, uh, you know, we do our Zoom happy hours to celebrate, you know, successes and wins. But there's something special when you can actually clink a glass as opposed to pretend like you're doing so. That's so well. So both sides of that, I'd say on the on the things that will carry forward, I think the asynchronous model and creating more documents, I think that's so spot on. And I feel like that is more inclusive too, because then more, more and more people around the world can be involved. I think that's so well done. And I totally feel you on the celebration. You can imagine actually with our news yesterday, I badly wanted to go celebrate with somebody. My wife was like, what are you going to do? And I actually, um, we si signed the deal on, uh, uh, in case you didn't see, we, we signed a deal to partner with Vista Equity Partners. Uh, and it was very exciting for us. And we signed the deal on Thursday on Thanksgiving, which was crazy. And uh, my wife was like, what are you going to do? Uh, and I was like, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to do a Peloton ride. So I literally just went on the, the bike and biked my energy out. Um, but I need to see people to go celebrate. And I think you're totally right. We won't take that for granted, at least hopefully for a while. You know, and, and just goes back to that human condition, you know, the kind of point of, you know, in the webinar here, like, you know, people need to be with one another. And um, I think that, you know, what's been inspiring to me is that we haven't lost the creativity. We haven't lost this collaborative yeah. dynamic. We haven't lost the uh, whiteboard metaphor where one person would draw and another person might, you know, kind of you know, remix or rehack you know, that drawing, I, we've been able to reinvent many of those experiences, but there is still something about the high five. There is still yeah. something about the fist bump. There is still something about, you know, that the breaking bread with someone at a dinner that I think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely want to come back to uh, and, and enrich, uh, you know, and so I, I just think that, you know, work coming forward will be a degree of some of the learnings that we've had over the last year and then remixing in some of the greatness of what we've had in the past. I think it's a great kind of metaphor to pivot to the third chapter then of kind of how do we think about our customers and driving success for them. And that's something, again, Salesforce has been passionate about from the very beginning. But you uniquely in a position where your technology is helping your customers uh, drive success for their clients, right, which is amazing. And obviously, we're, we're great to be in partnership together. You know, I, one thing I found uh, from your last Dreamforce talk, which was really powerful, was you talked about how your technology can enable a more human approach to customer experience, right? Not just automating and hiding the human being, but actually enabling that human being. Talk about like, you know, where you see kind of that human aspect of customer experience going and you know, kind of where you're trying to take the product line. Yeah, I think so much of our jobs and so much of our work have been in uh, task-based work. And yeah. I think that, you know, one of the things that I've always had a mission, especially since I worked myself in a context center earlier in my career, uh, was to eliminate some of the tedious parts of the job and really get to the places that I enjoyed, the, the parts that I found yield out of. Um, and so much of what, you know, our innovation over the last, you know, several years has been is bringing a degree of automation, but with human touch into the everyday experiences. Um, you know, when we created our Einstein bots platform, for example, and bots, you know, have kind of taken off in this economy, which has been fascinating. Uh, it's not so much about like bots to automate so that you deflect away from the agent. It's mm -hmm. about really getting better value from the bot so that you, your agent becomes more 
uh, intelligent about how to know what exactly that customer is looking for. So it becomes a real focused conversation, a real productive conversation and not a deflected one. Um, and that's where I kind of feel like so much of the world of customer service, many service leaders have been thinking about terms that are not customer centric, like deflection. Deflection, right. Yeah. Like deflection is a term that means I don't want to talk to you. Well, yeah. in the world, the ability to create these intimate connections and really know your customer, really understand your customer so you can engage with them in a much more personal value added manner. These are the areas that we're driving, you know, kind of our CRM technology to really create is automate, you know, the, the tedious out, but really create these capacity moments that you can really engage with high quality, uh, high value add assistance and, and, you know, kind of in, in new ways. Um, and, you know, it's not just about service. You, know, you think about what we're doing in sales. We launched an incredible technology called Salesforce Meetings, which now, uh, you know, today in most metaphors, it's really hard to establish face-to-face -face trusted experiences like you had in, in sales. You know, you've always seen like the metaphor of the handshake being, you know, the, the way right. you sign a deal or, or seal an agreement. Can't do that today, right? And so how do we reinvent these experiences where the meeting, as opposed to just looking at a slide and a small talking head, like how do we actually create a much more intimate, engaging experience with the meeting experience of today where my voice and my face are actually kind of in the same experience of the meeting body itself. These are kind of ways of rethinking, you know, engagement, especially in this digital only metaphor. So I really am excited about a lot of the foundational fabric that we're creating that celebrates the moment of time that we're in, but also kind of comes back to the same fundamental principles of trust with the customers, uh, you know, making sure that we create innovation that, uh, you know, speaks to the customer success and the equality that we have to create with the technologies that we offer. And those are our four key values at Salesforce. That's right. Customer success and equality. And they've been there since the beginning, which is amazing. The the um, When you think about you know seeing your customers kind of go through this pandemic, I can imagine there must be incredible stories of people that had to set up digital customer experience centers and all that all of a sudden. Are there any 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 examples that come to mind of people that have inspired you in the last few months? Yeah, I you know um, someone that um, really inspires me and that inspires me every day uh, is Vidian Bose Coffee uh, out of uh, Greenville, uh, North Carolina. Uh, they are an organization that only employs those with an intellectual or developmental disability. Uh, they're a coffee shop, um, and you know if you li listen to their uh, you know, CEO Amy Wright and her husband Ben, they have two children with Down syndrome, um, mm -hmm. and put this shop off uh, on, on you know, creating a legacy. It's a human rights movement, uh, you know, mass as a coffee shop is the way that they talk about it. Well, how do you create a coffee shop experience in a safe manner, especially for the employee base that, you know, that they occupy? Right. Right. That was something that, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, they had to face a lot of questions about you know, how could they do that? And what they did is they actually took their coffee shop online uh, and they took their coffee shop you know, into a subscription based model for uh, selling their you know, beans as opposed to brewing coffee. Uh, selling their wares, like their their uh, my my kids would call it their merch, merch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, the, you know, they became a whole new revenue stream that a coffee shop went digital uh, here in the pandemic and has now created an incredible following. Um, they've now uh, launched, I think, their fifth franchise, all in a pandemic. Um, so you think about this ability to reinvent the mom and pop coffee shop from Greenville, North Carolina, to now be. Uh, you know, a digital kind of uh, wide organization, that's the kind of inspiration that, you know, I find incredibly motivating. Um, and, you know, I, and you know, if the small businesses of today can do this, so can the big businesses. It's just we have to become action driven and motivated to really rethink, uh, you know, and our businesses, our terms, our subscriptions, our policies, our practices uh, for the time that we're in. And I, I'm, uh, I'm very inspired by my friends, Amy and Ben. And, uh, just as much as inspired by every customer who's seen success in this time. That's incredible. That what a story. That is truly a human first story. So thanks for sharing that. The um, you know one one of the uh, the things that I think a lot of people wonder is how does this all fit together? You know how does you know thinking about your customers and your community and your team fit together? Because you know the older adage in business was focus on the bottom line. This is all distracting, right? Why are we talking about all these other things? Just figure out a way to make a profit, maximize your profit. That's our jobs. And I think Salesforce has really proved that, you know, that doesn't have to be the only way you win. In fact, if you go this way, you can win even better. Why, why do you think it works? Like, why do you think it all fits together? And like, like, 
I mean, you've proven it, but why is it working? I think that, you know, for whatever reason, uh, our business model has always been built around this concept of success. Oop. Did you lose me? <laughs> yeah, you, your, your video went away. I can still hear you. So uh, let me switch. Uh, nothing like uh, a little bit of technical difficulty. Yeah, no that. okay. yeah it's okay. Wait, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, I, I think I, I can, I have the ability to f switch on the fly. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the model has always been built around the concept of customer success. I mean, so from day one, you know, our subscription-based you know business model has been uh, the more our customers are successful, the, the obviously the more value that we create for our organization. And you know, that's not been the guiding principle for us. I mean, the guiding principle for us has always been that our values create immense value. We don't call our you know customers. Uh, we call everyone our ohana, our family, right? our employees, our customers, our partners. They're all family members, and so it's our responsibility that we wanted to. You do something more lasting than just offer technology through the cloud. We wanted to create an opportunity for businesses to be better businesses so that they can give back into their communities and they can invest in their, uh, you know, kind of lo locales uh, to really create, you know, economic opportunity. And, and that flywheel is that higher purpose value system. Um, and so, like, when we think about, you know, our company's success, well, our success is deeply rooted in the success of our customers and our communities, our trailblazers. And so much so that, you know, the Salesforce economy, one of the fastest growing economies around there in technology today, over a trillion dollars of economic opportunity comes by working with and around the Salesforce ecosystem. And uh, it's one that I, I think that, um, again, it is about creating uh, the next wave of, of, of great organizations and taking care of great customers that way. Yeah, it's so awesome. And I think thinking about it as an ecosystem where you need everyone to be successful, not just your company inside your four walls is, I think, really a good way to summarize it. So I got the last important question, really more of a personal question. Einstein bots sound amazing. Have you figured out the executive bot so that we, if we can't make a meeting, they can just kind of join and pretend to be us? Is that is that coming from Salesforce? You know, I, I, I can't divulge all the uh, new innovation or next wave innovation that we're working on. But look, I, I think that... Um, what I would say is the world of AI, you know, for a lot of, uh, you know, I think that's written out there today, a lot of people have said, you know, AI will replace humans. I just don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, I think AI will enrich the human experience. I think AI will enrich the human engagements. Uh, and I think that ultimately it will be able to take on some low value work that might be repetitive or, you know, kind of uh, not a lot of value creation opportunities allowing us to free ourselves up for higher creativity work and higher connection work you know, with people. And that's what I'm really excited to work on is the next wave of innovation that creates better purpose and connection with others. Uh, and I think that's, um, that's something I'd love to talk about on, on, on our next webinar together. That would be amazing. Let's figure out that future together. Thanks, thanks Bill, to Salesforce for truly being the trailblazer in human first leadership, but also to you personally. Uh, it's been so great getting to know you and you embody it yourself. And I also love how you're, kind of making that reality through the technology that your team is building. Um, so thank you so much and wishing you and your personal Ohana the best in your little adventure in Florida. That sounds like a lot of fun. I hope you get some more Subway sandwiches sometime soon. <laughs> um, hopefully not too many. I don't need to add like the COVID-19. <laughs> <We laughs> thanks. Thanks so much. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone for watching. We'll see you soon.